Chapter 276, Malicious Intention The accident was, but only a small episode for Tang Xiao. With his current strength, he was fearless even if the enemy was of a great force. If the other party pay compensation sincerely then all was well, but if they dared to provoke him again, he didn't mind cause them injuries that they would remember for the rest of their lives. I didn't like your performance just now, seating on the Hummer's rear seat, Tang Xiao spoke in a cold and detached expression. I never provoke others, but I'll strike whoever dares to attack me. Do remember these words as well as the following. Whoever dares to be unbridled in front of us, strike them to death, force them to apologize, hit them to kowtow and admit their mistakes. Do this regardless of their identities. Overbearing. Tyrannical. At this moment, Tang Xiao showed the domineering manner that was engraved deep into his bones. M.O.A. replied in a deep tone, We'll engrave your words in our hearts, boss. Looking at M.O.A. and Tang Xiao said indifferently, Call Tianli later to investigate those kids' backgrounds. Looking at their attitudes, they won't let this go. Be prepared in a timely manner and counterattack if they still dare to provoke us. I'll inform her immediately, said M.O.A. Sitting at Tang Xiao's side, Ji Chime hesitated for a moment before asking, Venerable Lord, do you want me to take care of those kids' families personally? No, Tang Xiao shook his head, your task is to participate in the auction. If that thing is really the sole tranquilizer stone, obtain it no matter what the cost. After that, return to Jingmen Island as fast as possible. I understand, said Ji Chime. Rainbow Auction House it was one of the largest auction houses in Hong Kong. Either in terms of size and fame as well as the auctioned goods, this auction house enjoyed a good reputation over the past decades. Apart from the wealthy and powerful in Hong Kong, there were also a lot of those from the mainland and abroad that took their time to come to the Rainbow Auction House in Hong Kong, hoping to buy and obtain goods they liked. According to Tang Xiao's knowledge, the Rainbow Auction House had a lot of shareholders, and they were the renowned, super-rich people. Even Li Jiren also possessed shares of this auction house. Please show the invitation. Eight guards in black suits stood on both sides of the styled entrance of the auction house, whereas two beautiful females in Chong Sam's checked the guests' invitations. Walking with her stick, Ji Chime handed the invitation over. After it had been checked, the four got their seat numbers and passed the door smoothly. The welcoming lady inside then led them to the auction venue inside. The venue was large enough to accommodate nearly a thousand people. At this time, the number of guests that had arrived already reached the hundreds, yet a steady stream of guests was still coming in. The four then sat on a sixth-row seat in the auction venue according to their seat's numbers. How long until it starts? Turning to look at Ji Chime, Tang Xiao asked. Looking at the time, Ji Chime replied, it will begin at 6 p.m. It's 5.38 p.m. now, so it will start 22 minutes from now. Tang Xiao nodded. He had once participated in the auction in Jingmen Island before and spent a lot of money there. He also had seen how those wealthy people competed over the goods they liked, as well as saw how they went all out to throw money. Bin Road, at the corner of the Zhu's residence. Jiang Yu, Chen Fei, and Du Yang were smoking with grim expressions, with more than twenty burly men scattered around. They had been beaten and lost face, so they didn't want to let the matter stop there. Chi Chong Ching, if you don't want to join us then quickly scram. What the fuck are you watching here for? This young master is in a damn bad mood, you'd better get the fuck out to avoid being beaten by me, Jiang Yu blew out a smoke, cursing at Chi Chong Ching who was leaning on the Porsche in front of him. Staying silent for a moment, Chi Chong Ching slowly shook his head and said, Jiang Yu, I know that you're angry, but I gotta tell you to investigate these people first before retaliating. You two know that knowing your enemy will grant you victory, these words are not meant to be taken lightly. Scram. Chen Fei scolded him with a cold expression. Looking at his three buddies, Chi Chong Ching suddenly felt that they were really retarded. At this moment, he also felt that he was also an idiot for fooling around with them for so many years. 
he had a faint feeling that the owner of that Rolls Royce was not an ordinary man. Thus, he didn't want to get involved in this. In the case that it would lead to trouble, his position in his family would also be greatly affected. After a moment of silence, he waved toward two big men and entered his Porsche. Starting the car, he quickly left. However, he didn't really leave and instead turned around the building in front for a half turn and then parked near the building. After he entered the building, he and the two big men entered the room and looked down through the glass windows, watching Jiang Yu and the others. Gloomy and grim, a cold glint flashed in Jiang Yu's eyes as he spoke in a sinking tone, that surname she has left. After this, he's no longer one of us. Whoever dares to have a relationship with him later will have a fallout with me, Jiang Yu. Chen Fei sneered, that fucker just wanna look decent and proper eh? But he's just as coward as he used to be. I knew that he was a timid one, but I never expected that he'd be this damn cowardly. After we finish that kid, we gotta look for an opportunity to push Chi Chongqing into the pit later. We gotta let him know that he's nothing but a fart if he doesn't join us brothers. The solemn and traumatic Rolls Royce event hovered inside Du Yang's eyes. He had sent someone to check on the owner of the car, yet there was no news until now. He had a very keen intuition about the danger, of which he obtained when he was eight years old after being kidnapped. The same feeling arose inside his heart when he saw that young man. Being beaten was humiliating, but he probably wouldn't want to join in this if he hadn't been beaten. I think we gotta fully investigate their backgrounds before we retaliate. The three of us are indeed quite powerful in Hong Kong, but still, it's hard to say if we can become the real masters of our three families in the future. If we make a mess this time, our positions in our families will be greatly affected. Especially for you, Jiang Yu. Even though you are the eldest son of the Jiang group, but your old man favors your younger brother more. Du Yang extinguished his cigarette butt and spoke in a heavy tone. Upon hearing it, Jiang Yu fell silent immediately. He may be arrogant, egotistical and unruly, but he was not a fool. The person who could own a Rolls Royce, if he hadn't rented it or wanted to show off, that person probably really possessed a big power. His current position at home was rather awkward. So, if he really poked a big basket? Perhaps it would be his younger brother that would take over the position as the head of his family. After staying silent for half a minute, Jiang Yu slowly said, You're right. But I absolutely can never let go of today's matter. Didn't that kid said he'd send someone to deal with it? Let's wait and see who will take care of this matter. Also, Du Yang, haven't you already called someone to investigate the owner of this Rolls Royce? How long till you get the news? I'm not sure. It should be fast, though, said Du Yang while shaking his head. Just as these people were having a chat, three Otis stopped near the Rolls Royce. The car's doors opened as Tian Li, looking cold and grim, got off the car along with six big men in black suits. Looking at the three youths coldly, Tian Li walked straight to them and spoke, Who hit my boss's car? Upon seeing Tian Li, the Jiang Yu trio were slightly surprised for a moment. They often visited Hong Kong's everlasting feast heel to meals, thus they naturally knew who Tian Li was. Every time they saw her, she always greeted them with a smile. This was the first time they saw her looked so indifferent and cold. Tian Li, you're saying that the owner of this Rolls Royce is your boss? Jiang Yu felt relaxed at this moment. In his eyes, the everlasting feast hall was but only a simple, pure restaurant business. Even if its business was very good, but it paled in comparison to the Jiang group. Tian Li said coldly, Tell me. Who hit my boss's car? It was me. What do you want to do now? Jiang Yu snorted coldly out of anger. Hearing it, Tian Li strode in front of him. Without saying a word, she fiercely slapped his face. Her force was quite heavy as the other side of Jiang Yu's swollen cheek became red and swollen. The latter staggered backward a few steps before heavily falling on the ground. Tian Li, you're looking for death. Chen Fei was shocked and instantly became furious. 
He swiftly motioned the big men around him and shouted to the back. Tianli snorted coldly. Her figure instantly flashed in front of Chen Fei. She raised her hand and fiercely slapped his face. The force she used this time was even greater as Chen Fei was directly sent flying. Kill this slut. Jiang Yu crawled up from the ground with difficulty and angrily roared. In an instant, more than twenty big men around and the six brought by Tian Li clashed. At the same time, they also wielded knives and sticks they were carrying on their waists and sleeves. Idiots. Retreating two steps, Tian Li held her arms and glanced at the fighting around, cursing in disdain. Coldness flashed in the six big men's eyes she brought. Their wrists fluttered as sharp daggers appeared in their hands. Almost without hesitation, they quickly greeted the twenty big guys. Bam, bam, bam. Puff. The six big men of the Everlasting Feast Hall moved extremely fast. Their martial arts were many times stronger compared to those twenty big guys. In just half a minute, they had completely steamrolled them to the ground. Sweeping the swollen Jiang Yu and Chen Fei who had a shocked expression on their faces, Tian Li's eyes finally landed on Du Yang, saying coldly, Originally, I thought you and Qi Chong Qing were the most intelligent amongst the four of you. But now it seems that he's smarter than you as he doesn't mix with you in this incident. Chapter 277 Bidding Tian Li's imposing manner was especially overbearing and powerful at the moment. She always had a smiling face, welcoming guests from all over the world, because those people came to spend their money. But now, offending her boss was a more serious implication, offending her. She was an elite that had been trained by Gu Yan personally. She was once sent abroad and had gone through a life and death training. It could be said that the people she had killed exceeded three digits. Her usual amicable appearance was only a camouflage. I'll give you a chance to scram now. Ask your elders to apologize to my everlasting feast hall, otherwise, your fate will not be much better off than either of them. A frightened and alarmed expression hung on Du Yang's face. He desperately swallowed his saliva, watching the fallen twenty big men. He looked at the six big men brought by Tian Li. After staying silent for a moment, he then said slowly, Since I had already messed up big time today, I'm afraid that only the elders of my family can come forward. As to whether they'll come to apologize, I can't say it for sure. I bid you farewell for now. Inside the building nearby, Chi Chong Ching was dumbstruck as he looked at more than twenty big men that had been beaten savagely. He looked at Jiang Yu and Chen Fei who had been beaten yet again. He also knew who Tian Li was, but never had he ever expected that she actually possessed such a grim side. Those six big guys, he also had seen them as the security guards of the Everlasting Feast Hall. It's just that he didn't expect that these six security guards would have such powerful skills. How much time did they spend just now? It was only half a minute and mostly only a minute. Six people had actually knocked out more than twenty people in just half a minute. Were they all retired soldiers from Army's special forces? Suddenly, Chi Chong Ching felt that he was quite fortunate inwardly as he didn't involve himself in this matter. Otherwise, wouldn't he also get beaten savagely by now? However, Tian Li dared to beat Jiang Yu and Chen Fei. Wasn't the Everlasting Feast Hall afraid of the retaliation from the Jiang Group and Wanyuan real estate? Everyone knows that these two forces are much stronger than the Everlasting Feast Hall, Chi Chong Ching was somewhat puzzled. On the street nearby. Take them both. If the rest of you can still get up, go back immediately to find your employers. Tell them to come to my Everlasting Feast Hall within two hours. Otherwise, I can't guarantee that these two chaps' limbs will still be intact by then, said Tianli in a cold and detached tone. Having said that, she looked at the distance and waited calmly. She then waved toward two traffic police officers who had just arrived. Hello, ma'am. The two traffic police hesitated a bit, but they eventually chose to come. I believe that you will also investigate this traffic accident clearly. Do remember to not act as if you don't know. 
Don't even think treating us unfairly because you know the background of these two kids. Now, call someone to take the car. I'll send someone to contact the police authorities later, said Tianli indifferently. Understood, ma'am. The two traffic police subconsciously looked at the six big men and nodded in consent. 6 p.m. Inside the Rainbow Auction House's venue. Hundreds of guests had already come to attend tonight's auction. The front entrance was closed as most of the lights inside were being turned off, leaving only the bright light shining on the auction block. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. A young woman with light makeup and dressed in Chong Sam walked casually to the auction block. With a bright smiling face, she spoke. Does everyone think that me being the auctioneer presiding over for tonight's auction is rather accidental? Actually, while I'm a singer, I was also an auctioneer in some auction houses abroad for half a year. I am certified. <laughs> it's so unexpected that a big star would preside over tonight's auction. It seems the auction house has spent a lot of money. Wow. So eye-catching. The longer I look at this girl, the more beautiful she looks. Ah. Uh. The auctioneer is unexpectedly her. In the following seat, Tang Xiao was a bit surprised as he didn't expect that he would come across an acquaintance while attending this auction. This acquaintance had once borrowed his mobile and owed him some money which Zhang Xinya. Undeniably, Zhang Xinya was very beautiful tonight, even comparable to Ouyang Lulu, Kong Xia, as well as Mu Weining. Wearing a smiling expression, Zhang Xinya gently raised her white-gloved palm and laughed. I know that everyone wants to snatch the valuable goods tonight. So, without further ado, I announce that tonight's auction starts now. The first item to be auctioned is a tea set of ceramic ware from the royal kiln of the Ming dynasty. It is confirmed that this ceramic tea set was once used in the royal palace, making this a collection item for everyone who loves tea parties. The reserve price is 5 million, with the bid increment of at least 100,000. Now, let the auction begin. Immediately, a lot of people began to bid. 5.1 million. 5.5 million. In just a few minutes, the price of this ceramic tea set from the royal kiln of Ming Dynasty had risen to 8.8 .8 million. Eventually, the ceramic tea set was bought by an old man with a bid of 8.8 .8 million yuan. Zhang Xinya laughed, congratulations to the number 0246 gentleman. You can now go to the backstage to carry on the transaction, or you can wait for the auction to end before going there. Next, we'll auction the second item. It is. Under Zhang Xinya's auspicious ceremony, the auction was carried out in full swing. She possessed excellent eloquence and was good at inciting everyone's emotions. So almost every item had been sold at a very high price. Two hours later. After having auctioned an antique calligraphy and painting, Zhang Xinya said with a smile, the next item to be auctioned is a mysterious ore. This mysterious ore is very unusual, even our appraiser experts were unable to identify it. What I can tell everyone is, this ore has a magical effect for whoever wears it. It will have a kind of peaceful and serene feeling and even make them feel comfortable. Originally, our auction house's big boss wanted to keep this ore, but this item belongs to the consigner who entrusted us to auction it, after all. Hence, we can only do what the client wants. So, if the big boss wants it, I'm afraid that you'll have to buy it through the auction. The reserve price is 1 million, with a bid increment of at least 100,000 yuan for each bid. At this moment, Tang Xiao had released his perception and quickly wrapped the ore on the tray held by Zhang Xinya. Along with his sensing, he already determined that this ore was indeed the sole tranquilizer stone and also of the best quality. Earth certainly has a deep connection with the immortal world, or else it'd be impossible to have so many valuable treasures from there. Thinking and sighing inwardly, Tang Xiao immediately bidded. He had once participated in an auction and knew perfectly well that if someone really wanted to buy something they liked, they would only begin to show their capital later. 1.1 million. 1.2 million. 
After the bid from two visitors, the venue went quiet. Seeing this situation, Zhang Xinya didn't lose heart and rather smiled, well, as the ancients said, jade can nourish people. Our auction house's appraiser experts believe that Hisor is also able to nourish and keep people healthy. So, I hope everyone bids enthusiastically. After all, the things that can bring good benefits for us are really scarce and rare. Two million. As she finished speaking, someone immediately bid. 2.5 million. 2.8 million. 8 million. In just a few minutes, the price had raised to 8 million. Eight times more than the floor price. Finally, the people participating in the bidding were far fewer, and there were only two to three people still raising the price. Tang Xiao turned and nodded to Ji Qimei. Then, she raised her placard and spoke in a deep tone, 10 million. 11 million, a voice sounded. 20 million. Ji Qimei lifted her placard again. 50 million. The other party voiced his bid again in a deep tone. At the same time, the old man who just bid in the front row turned his head to look at Ji Qimei. As indifferent as always, Ji Qimei lifted her placard again and said, 100 million. The old man's complexion changed slightly, looking upset. After staying been silent for a moment, he lifted his placard and said, 200 million. 500 million, Ji Qimei lifted her placard and bid. Suddenly, the whole venue burst into an uproar, all looking toward Ji Qimei. Originally, they couldn't care less about a piece of or as the reserve price was only 1 million. But in just a short time, its price had risen to 500 million. This kind of capital was the first time to occur in this auction until now. The most incredible fact was that the current bidding was no longer within hundreds or millions yuan increment in the bids, but soared to hundreds of millions. Ah, uh. it that stone really a treasure? Many people secretly guessed. At the moment, the old man showed a forced and wry expression. A lot of people knew him. He was one of the rich big bosses in Hong Kong. The entertainment bigwig, Gu Weidong. He was also one of the shareholders of the Rainbow Auction House. He didn't expect that that for such a bizarre, mysterious or, someone would spend so high a price to compete with him. 500 million was nothing to him, but he could see that the other party's manner was to absolutely win it. Hence, he was perfectly aware that even if he increased the bid, the other party would bid higher. And perhaps, because of this auction, he would have a fallout with them. Then let it be. It looked like he wasn't fated with that piece of ore. Gu Weidong shook his head and gave up. At this time, Zhang Xinya's eyes didn't lock on Ji Qimei but looked at the direction of the voice as she saw Tang Xiao sitting there. She didn't expect that she would see Tang Xiao here. When she discovered that Tang Xiao was also looking at her, the smile on her face turned more brilliant. Unnoticed, nodding slightly at Tang Xiao, she said with a smile, it seems that someone has a keen perception to identify a pearl. The number 0125 lady has bidden 500 million. Is there someone else who wants to bid higher? If not, this precious or will belong to the number 0125 lady. Chapter 278 Successfully Obtaining the Items The several hundreds of guests in the auction venue fell silent. They thought it wasn't worth it buying a piece of ore for 500 million. Everyone looked at Ji Chime with a slightly strange expression. Even many people libeled inwardly, is this the extravagance of multimillionaire people? On the other hand, as the auctioneer, seeing that nobody wanted to increase the bid, Zhang Xinya immediately smiled and said, Since there's no one amongst the ladies and gentlemen that wants to increase the bid, then this or will go to the number 0125 lady. Are you going to carry out the transaction in the backstage or wait until the auction ends? I'll go now. Ji Qimei stood up, nodding slightly toward Tang Xiao she then straightly left. However, her action made most people's eyes turn toward Tang Xiao. Even Zhang Xinya was flabbergasted. She had asked Ouyang Lulu, her boudoir friend about Tang Xiao. 
Even though Ouyang Lulu didn't tell much about him, but what she did tell was enough to shock her secretly. The auction thereafter was carried out as per usual. A few minutes later Ji Chimei returned with the soul tranquilizer stone. After she handed it over to Tang Xiao, she whispered, Venerable Lord, we've successfully obtained what we need to buy. Shall we leave or continue bidding? Pondering for a moment, Tang Xiao replied, You go first and take this soul tranquilizer stone. Take Ah in with you. I'll stay here to see if there's anything else good enough to buy. Understood, Lord. Ji Chimed complied as she looked at Tang Xiao as he observed the soul tranquilizer stone before giving it to her. As though recalling something, she quickly took out a bank card and handed it to him, Lord, there's still 9.5 billion yuan in this card. If you see something you like, you can buy it freely. Tang Xiao didn't refuse it since he really didn't have money. After taking it, he looked at the departing Ji Chime and lamented that she was really thoughtful and sensible. Money, wealth, it was merely worldly possessions. He cared not about wealth, however, he was in a shortage of resources for his cultivation. He wanted to train a group of trusted subordinates immediately. Subsequently, it would need a lot of resources. If he had no money, it would indeed be difficult for him to handle a lot of matters. Had it been before, he would feel awkward to take the money from the everlasting feast hall. But now, he didn't have this kind of feeling since he also had given the ingredients to Ji Chime to refine pills, which itself was a priceless treasure. However, just two minutes after Ji Chime left, Zhang Xinya, at the auction block, said with a smile, The next item to be auctioned is a Millennium Ginseng. As far as I know, there was an auction held in Jingmen Island that also auctioned a Millennium Ginseng. So, adding this piece now, we have two cases emerging this year, whereas we hadn't seen such an item being auctioned in our country within the last three years. This strain of Millennium Ginseng will be sold at the reserve price of 100 million, with a bid increment of no less than 5 million. Now, let the auction start. A burst of light shot out from Tang Xiao's eyes. He hadn't read the auction catalog before so he didn't know anything else that this auction would sell apart from the soul tranquilizer stone. When his perception enveloped the strain of millennium ginseng on the tray, his expression changed slightly. It's a 3,000 years old wild ginseng? After an instant judgment, Tang Xiao quickly grabbed his mobile and dialed Mo An's number. Yes, boss. Mo An's voice came through the phone. Tell Ji Chime to come back, said Tang Xiao in a deep tone. Yes. After ending the call, his eyes firmly locked on the 3,000 years old wild ginseng. 150 million. After 10 seconds of silence, someone directly raised the price by 50 million. Many knew that person, the eyeglasses magnate of Hong Kong, Ku Xintao. 160 million. Even though many people knew Ku Xintao, but a lot of them were also determined to obtain this millennium wild ginseng. Hence, they also didn't want to back out this time. 200 million. Ku Xintao increased the bid. 210 million. 250 million. 260 million. 270 million. More than a dozen of people increased the price constantly and the Millennium Wild Ginseng's price continued rising. In just five to six minutes, it had exceeded 350 million. Yet, the one who was bidding the price was still Ku Xintao. Looking at Ji Chime who had just returned, Tang Xiao said lightly, a wild ginseng is being auctioned now. No matter how high the price is, we must buy it. It will greatly benefit Yen. Ji Chime's expression changed and she asked quickly, Lord, what's the price now? 350 million. She nodded, raised her placard and called out, 500 million. Wow. The entire auction venue turned into turmoil yet again by Ji Chime's call. Several hundreds of riches that came to the auction talked in whispers. Who's that old lady? She just spent 500 million to buy a stone and now she increased the bid by 150 million at once. Does she want to burn her money? 
The value of that strain of millennium ginseng is at most 1.2 billion, right? But it's rather extravagant to spend 500 million on this thing. What is her identity and how have I never seen her before? Send someone to investigate her. We must know her background before the auction ends. Tonight there is really a good show to see. But wanting me to spend 500 million to buy a millennium wild ginseng is a big no-no. I can only give up. 600 million. In the back corner of the hall, a man wearing reading glasses and dressed in a Chinese tunic suit suddenly raised his placard. When everyone's eyes shifted to him, their expressions changed greatly. Li Jiren? Nobody thought that the one who increased the bid turned out to be Li Jiren. They didn't know when Li Jiren had arrived at the auction venue. Tang Xiao turned his head. When he saw Li Jiren, his brows wrinkled slightly. He didn't know much about the super billionaires in Hong Kong, but he knew who Li Jiren was. After all, this person was the legendary richest man in Asia, and he often saw his photos. Ji Chime turned around to look at the back. She raised her placard once again and called out in a deep tone, One billion. What? The guests in the entire venue were all dumbfounded. They didn't expect that Ji Chime dared to compete with Li Jiren for the strain of Millennium Ginseng, even raising the price by 400 million. In the back row, Li Jiren himself was astonished. He never thought that someone would raise the bid to 1 billion. He originally believed that after he bid 600 million it would be a sure shot that the Millennium Wild Ginseng would be his. He was silent for a moment before he raised his placard again and lightly said, 1.1 billion. 2 billion. Ji Chime didn't care about money. Even if she had to burn it, she had to obtain that more than 3,000 years old ginseng strain. After all, there were only a few things that could give benefits to her master. Once she found one, let alone spending money, even if she had to rob it forcefully and kill, she would still go all out. Li Jiren was stunned. He then shook his head. He was indeed a rich man and two billion was but only a small change to him. But it wasn't worth spending it to buy the Millennium Ginseng. He was a businessman. He standards spending money. He wouldn't compete to buy things that were not worth to buy. Hundreds of riches in the auction venue were at a loss and didn't know what to say. They only looked at Ji Chime with strange expressions. Nobody thought that Ji Chime would dare to compete with Li Jiren. More so that she even raised the bid by 900 million all of a sudden, so the Millennium Wild Ginseng's price reached 2 billion yuan. At this moment, Zhang Xinya also was shocked. She never thought that the price of this Millennium Wild Ginseng would actually reach 2 billion yuan. Originally, she thought that a price of 500 million yuan would be its limit. But now, it seems that it was four times higher than she expected. However, she still felt happy inwardly. According to the agreement between her and the auction house, she would get 1,000th commission fee for each item sold in the auction. If the auctioned items could reach 10 times the reserve price, she would get a commission fee of 2 thousandths. For tonight's commission fee, it wouldn't be less than 8 digits, right? Zhang Shenya couldn't help but feel happy inside. Immediately after, she noticed that Li Jiren didn't seem to want to increase the bid again as she said, is there any higher bid? If not, this strain of Millennium Wild Ginseng will belong to the number 0125 lady. After asking for a few more times and having nobody call out, Zhang Xinya knocked the wooden mallet and said with a smile, Congratulations to the number 0125 lady. You've won this strain of Millennium Wild Ginseng. Might I ask whether you want to go to the backstage to carry out the transaction or wait until the auction ends? I'll go now. Ji Chime stood up as she nodded again toward Tang Xiao before she left. As for the next auction, Tang Xiao no longer followed. 10 p.m. The auction had ended. The guests had gotten up and were ready to leave. Smiling, Zhang Xinya put off her white gloves as she appeared in front of Tang Xiao. Her gaze swept away from Ji Chime and then shifted toward Tang Xiao. 
She then said with a smile, Hello, Mr. Tang. We meet again. Whilst nodding at her, Tang Xiao realized that a lot of people around were looking at her. He then immediately replied, Has your family member gotten well? I heard from Qin Zhizhong that he already found the medicine you need. Zhang Xinya nodded solemnly and replied gratefully, He's already fine. Anyways, thank you, Mr. Tang. If not because of you, I. Raising his hands to interrupt her, Tang Xiao then turned around as he looked at Ji Qimei and said, Aen will escort you to Victoria Harbor. Immediately go back to Jingmen Island and take this wild ginseng. Wait for me to come back before giving the medication to Yen. Understood. Showing respect on her old face, Ji Qimei complied and left with Mo Aen, whereas Mo Ao was left standing beside Tang Xiao as though a spear. Surprised, Zhang Xinya looked at the leaving Ji Qimei, astonished. When she looked back to him, she asked curiously, Tang Xiao, you know that old lady. Listening to your conversation with her, it seems that you. She's my subordinate, said Tang Xiao calmly. Chapter 279, Li Jiren's Invitation Shocked, Zhang Xinya looked at Tang Xiao tongue-tied as she could hardly believe what she heard. Her heart throbbed faster than before. His subordinate? The elderly who bid billions of yuan that shocked the audience and even didn't give Li Jiren face turned out to be Tang Xiao's subordinate. In other words, she buying that piece of ore and wild ginseng was in fact for her master, Tang Xiao? Looking at her, Tang Xiao felt funny. He found that her dumbfounded expression was quite cute, especially her bright black eyes and her charming phased look was as if a cute kitty. Suddenly, Tang Xiao's face flickered as he smiled and asked, Do you have anything else to do later? Swallowing her saliva and waking up from her daze, Zhang Xinya then shook her head and said, After presiding over this auction, I got nothing to do. Are you familiar with Hong Kong? asked Tang Xiao. Of course. I'm a native here, answered Zhang Xinya. If so, do you have time now? It's my first time in Hong Kong and I must leave tomorrow. The night is still young and I haven't had time to stroll around here, so how about finding a place and have some snacks? Said Tang Xiao with a smile. You're leaving tomorrow, surprised, Zhang Xinya asked. Yeah, I'm going abroad to take care of something, said Tang Xiao. Please wait a while, I'll go get my bag. Hong Kong is well known as the gourmet paradise. I'll take you to taste the local unique delicacies. Tang Xiao squinted as he saw some people behind Zhang Xinya. Though Li Jiren was elderly, his body was still healthy and vigorous and didn't need a helper. His pace was still steady and calm. But beside him, two middle-aged bodyguards that looked like bouncers accompanied him. Little brother, may I ask your surname? It's Tang. Tang Xiao. Li Jiren nodded slowly as he stood before Tang Xiao. Smiling, he asked, If my guess is correct, you should know the old lady who competed with me for the wild ginseng, or you should have a deep relationship with her, yes? Your guess is correct. She's my subordinate, said Tang Xiao lightly. Li Jiren stared blankly for a moment. He didn't expect that that old lady turned out to be a subordinate of the young man before him. He immediately smiled, little brother Tang, it seems like you're a very interesting young man, a really rare one at that. If that's true, then you might have abused her, the elderly, since she's old already. She should have been in her retirement and enjoying life, no? Shaking his head, Tang Xiao replied, how about you? Does Li Jiren himself wants to retire and enjoy the rest of his life? Uh... Stunned and staring blankly for a second, Li Jiren laughed involuntarily the moment after, saying, Little brother Tang is truly interesting. Anyways, do you have time to have a dinner together? I'm sorry. I just invited her, Tang Xiao shook his head. Yet again, Li Jiren got surprised for a moment, for he didn't expect that Tang Xiao actually would refuse him. Aside from the dear beauty Kong Xia who also rejected his invitation, it had been many years that nobody refused him. 
At this time, Zhang Xinya was also shocked since she had never imagined that Li Jiren would come here personally. More so that his purpose was to invite Tang Xiao to dinner, and the most shocking thing was the latter actually rejected it. Recalling how powerful Li Jiren was, she quickly asked, Mr. Tang, it's fine with me. After being silent for a moment, Tang Xiao said lightly, since you don't mind, let's have dinner together. You're the local host here, so it's your call. Zhang Xinya looked at Li Jiren, silent. The latter then said with a smile, well, little brother Tang is not a native of Hong Kong. In that case, might I play the host? I went to Beijing a few days ago and my old friend gave me some good tea. How about we taste it together? Please lead the way, said Tang Shou calmly. At this time, a voice came over as Kushin Tao arrived before them and said with a smile, Uncle Li, little brother, may I join you? Shin Tao, since you couldn't buy that wild ginseng, then you want to know the buyer's identity, huh? Li Jiren laughed. Being seen through, Kushin Tao looked awkward, but in a moment after, his expression turned normal and smiled, yeah. Spending 2 billion yuan for a wild ginseng made me very curious about the buyer. Toward Kushin Tao, Tang Xiao also didn't have a suspicion at all because it was an auction after all, the highest bidder would win. Whereas Li Jiren and he had also spent more than a billion. Turning and shaking hands with Tang Xiao, Kushin Tao then said with a smile, I'm Kushin Tao. Accepting his handshake, Tang Xiao then said, Shall we go? A car had been waiting outside as they went out of the auction house. There were still a lot of guests that had yet to leave as they chatted in Small's group of two or three. Seeing Li Jiren and Kushin Tao coming out, they approached to greet them. Li Jiren himself greeted them cordially and responded to everyone with a smile. After they boarded the car and left, the crowd that greeted Li Jiren and Kushin Tao broke into chatter. The young man that was followed Li Jiren and Kushin Tao, who's he? I recall he was the one seating with the old lady who bought the wild ginseng at the auction. What's that young man's identity? How could he leave with Li Jiren? That famous singer, Zhang Shenya, seems to have a rather unordinary relationship with that young man. They just boarded the same car. Have you seen that young man before? From which family he comes from? Deepwater Bay 79, Li Jiren's Mansion As five cars arrived slowly at the mansion's entrance and parked in the interior parking lot, Tang Xiao and Zhang Xinya got off from the Hummer. Tang Xiao was somewhat curious about Li Jiren's mansion. After all, his mansion had always been very mysterious all these years as no one amongst the paparazzi in Hong Kong was able to take a picture of its interior. Little brother Tang, is my place good enough? Greeting them into the main hall, Li Jiren then sat in the sofa of the first floor's living room and asked with a smile. He could feel an extraordinary bearing exuding from Tang Xiao. Such an aura could only be seen from those who had high status. Hence, he was very curious about him. It's good. The construction, the style of interior design and decoration, the furniture's placement, the most particular and important thing is, the feng shui here is excellent. You should have asked someone to manage it for you, no, said Tang Xiao calmly. Surprised, Li Jiren stared blankly for a moment as he asked in astonishment, Little brother Tang actually knows about feng shui? I know a little about it, Tang Xiao laughed. A profound respect immediately revealed itself on Li Jiren's expression. He firmly believed in feng shui, and those masters who had knowledge about feng shui had a high status either in Hong Kong or all over the world. May I know who little brother Tang's teacher is? Shaking his head, Tang Xiao answered, I apologize, I can't say. It's kind of inconvenient. A tinge of regret could be seen on Li Jiren's face as he then put the thought to the back of his mind. This time he invited Tang Xiao over in order to find out what uses did Tang Xiao had for that wild ginseng for him to spare no expense to buy it. Where are you from, little brother Tang? Listening to your accent, you shouldn't be a native, right? Xuanqing province, said Tang Xiao. The development in the mainland is very fast now. 
I had traveled to Xuanqing province before and it has a lot of wealthy families there. But I've never heard about a Tang family there. Yet, being able to come with such a huge amount of money to buy the ore and the ginseng, I presume that it should be a family with a profound background, no? Ring, ring, ring. Tang Xiu's mobile suddenly rang. As he took it out and saw the caller's number, his brows slightly furrowed as he pressed the answer button and spoke, Tang Xiu speaking. Boss, it's Tian Li. A huge number of people showed up near our restaurant in Hong Kong. If my guess is correct, they should be related with the Jiang Group, Wanyuan Real Estate, and Du Kong Winery. Hao Lei has already brought the Grand Fortune Jewelry's guards here. What do you command, boss? A killing intent glinted from Tang Xiu's eyes as his expression turned cold and replied in a deep tone, I'll be there shortly. If they dare to attack the restaurant before I get there, fight them back. Yes, said Tian Li respectfully. After hanging up the phone, Tang Xiu looked at Li Jiren and Kushin Tao who looked surprised and said, Gentlemen, I have a small matter to deal with. If there's an opportunity, we'll gather again later. Also, about the question from Mr. Ku, I must tell you that it's better to rely on oneself rather than rely on the heaven and place. If you have some time in the future, please visit and look after my enterprise here, the Everlasting Feast Hall. Having said that, he turned to Zhang Xinya and said, It seems that having you as a tour guide tonight must be cancelled. I'll contact you again the next time I visit Hong Kong. I'll go with you, Zhang Xinya said quickly. Staying silent for a moment, Tang Xiao then nodded. Getting up and looking at Tang Xiao, Li Jiren said with a bit of surprised expression, Little brother Tang, I know about the Everlasting Feast Hall. Its headquarters is on Jingmen Island. But I have never imagined that you'd turn out to be the big boss of the enterprise though. That call before, there seems to be some trouble in the Everlasting Feast Hall, yes? I have some connections in Hong Kong, would you like me to lend a hand? Tang Xiao shook his head, no, I'll resolve it myself. Li Jiren and Kushin Tao watched as Tang Xiao and Zhang Xinya got on the car and quickly left. Li Jiren then turned around and said to a big bodyguard, send someone to investigate Tang Xiao's identity. Also, find out about what's happening there. Understood. The big bodyguard replied and left. Uncle Li, you seem to value Tang Xiao? It's not like your style. Ku Tao said with a smile. I just feel that this young man is very mysterious. He has an aura of someone that has been in a high position for a long time. I find it hard to believe that a young man in his early twenties can actually develop such an imposing manner, unless, he has been in a superior position above anyone else since childhood and has a huge power and privileges. Hence, I'm a bit curious about him. Chapter 280, The Shocking Past Events Nodding, Kushintao replied, he spent 2.5 billion in tonight's auction. Despite my knowledge, it's my first time seeing a young man in his twenties who can do something so extraordinary. That everlasting feast hall seems very mysterious and also has a deep relationship with the Grand Fortune Jewelries. Laughing, Li Jiren said, actually, the Grand Fortune Jewelries is one of the everlasting feast hall's industries. What? Kushin Tao's expression changed and looked shocked. The smile on Li Jiren's face disappeared, replaced by a slightly dignified expression as he slowly said, You might not know, but I had been to Jingmen Island 20 years ago. At that time, I had some problems with my business and was in need of a fleet of ships to transport a number of goods. At that time, the Everlasting Feast Hall already had a sizable fleet and a very mysterious woman surnamed Gu was the sole owner of the enterprise. I sent someone to investigate her, however, not only that there were no results, even the people I sent disappeared out of thin air. Shocked and aghast, Kushintao replied, Uncle Lee, you mean, those people you sent had been done in by the Everlasting Feast Hall's people? No, they did not die, but they were captured and escorted to a mining area somewhere in Africa and became coolies there. That time, the owner of that mining area was the former owner of the Everlasting Feast Hall. She complied with my pleas that time, but I had to promise her two things in exchange. 
Listening to the behind-the-scenes secret story of that year, Kushinto asked, What did you promise? With all seriousness, Li Jiren solemnly said, First, she forbade me to investigate the everlasting feast hall further, otherwise, I and my company group would disappear from Earth. Secondly, she wanted me to help her find someone surnamed Tang, Tang Xiao. Ku Xintao suddenly said, So, it turned out that the reason why you invited him over is that he's someone that the Everlasting Feast Hall wanted you to find him. No. I didn't recall that matter at first. It's just that I felt that he's very special, thus, I invited him over. But, when he said he's the boss of the Everlasting Feast Hall, then I remembered what happened that year. Smiling, Ku Xintao said, Uncle Li, you are really someone with keen perception. However, the Everlasting Feast Hall seems to be kind of very arrogant to even dare to threaten you. Xintao, remember my words. You must never become an enemy of the Everlasting Feast Hall, said Li Jiren solemnly. Your meaning is, the Everlasting Feast Hall is very powerful, even on par with the current you? Ku Xintao asked in astonishment. Falling into silence for a moment, Li Jiren then slowly said, Perhaps the wealth of the Everlasting Feast Hall is on par with me, but they possess fearsome power, for which I can never able to contend with. For the rest of my life, I'm afraid that I can never forget the scene twenty years ago when I shipped those cargoes and was attacked by pirates. What scene? asked Kushin Tao quickly. Overlooking the Dongsha Islands, Li Jiren said word by word. The Black Shark Pirates had once been a scourge in Dongsha Islands for decades and they were all composed of vicious and ruthless pirates. They boasted of more than 200 heavily armed pirates and their military strength was very strong. Yet, those 20 guards from Everlasting Feast Hall who were protecting the ships destroyed them. Completely. What? Ku Tao involuntarily cried out in fright. Taking back his vision, Li Jiren looked at him deeply and said, You didn't hear it wrong. Those pirates were completely annihilated by those guards without using firearms. They only carried a dagger each, disappearing and appearing mysteriously near those pirates. More than 200 pirates were killed, but only six men got minor injuries and one was heavily injured amongst those 20 guards, no deaths. Hiss. Kushintao shivered and couldn't help but take a cold breath. Gently patting him on the shoulder, Li Jiren seriously said, So, remember my words. Do not become an enemy of the Everlasting Feast Hall, they are too fearsome and horrifying. Even if my guards are very powerful and I train a lot of powerful individuals, but I can never be compared with them. I'll bear that in mind, Uncle Li. Kushintao nodded heavily as different color glinted in his eyes. Hong Kong, Kowloon Bay. The everlasting feast hall covered a very wide area whereby four antique towering restaurants with five floors each stood, along with a seven-story towering pavilion that was located between the four restaurants. Normally, the center restaurant of the everlasting feast hall was not open to the public unless a VIP visited the venue, which it then would be opened officially. Each of the four restaurants had its own manager, whereas Tian Li was the general manager. Chief Tian, what should we do now? On the third floor window of the northern restaurant building, a gentle middle-aged man who was standing beside Tian Li softly asked. He was Deng Zhen, the manager of the north restaurant. Boss will be here shortly. If those people dare to attack the restaurant, we'll fight back immediately. But don't kill them, it's fine disabling them. Tianli said in a cold and detached tone. Understood. Though Dang Jin was curious about the fabled big boss, he didn't dare to show it. Becoming a manager of the North Restaurant of the Everlasting Feast Hall in Hong Kong was already considered as a high-level position, yet he still only saw the small boss before and had never seen the big boss. Behind them was the sexy Hao Lei, nesting on the sofa lazily with a cigarette between her fingers. She smirked, it seems that our new boss is kind of a ruthless figure too. Is it because Elder Ji is with him? Turning her head to her, Tian Li said calmly, Elder Ji left Hong Kong half an hour ago to return to Jingmen Island. A tinge of astonishment could be seen on Hao Lei's face as she puffed out and said, Tian Li, how much do you know about our new boss? 
Looking at her, Tianli shook her head, I'm afraid I know less than you. Rolling her eyes, Hao Lei hummed, Humph, you're playing modest, huh? You did intelligence in the past and it seems that aside from getting news and all, you're also the strongest amongst us. Come on, hurry and tell me what you know. Boss is very easygoing and young. Elder Ji told me when she left that Mo An and Mo A's opportunity came, and it's due to the order from Boss. Opportunity? Hao Lei was stunned and suddenly jumped from the sofa with glittering lights in her eyes, growling, You mean that they have learned? With slight envy in her eyes, Tian Li said, That's right. Hence, we can also take our chances. If we could get it, then, we will ascend, but if not, we may have to wait for a very long time. Hao Lei took a deep breath and replied in a heavy tone, I gotta take this opportunity. Even if boss wants me to serve him, I'll sacrifice everything. Pfft. Tian Li couldn't help laughing as she glanced at her and humorlessly said, We only need to do one thing in front of our boss. What is it? Obedience. Absolute obedience. Even if boss wants us to die, you must never shrink back, said Tianli with a revered expression. Rolling her eyes, Hao Lei sat back on the sofa as she moved her leg on top of the other and said, You still need to say that? The former big boss in the past, in any case, our lives belong to big boss, same for the new big boss. Standing beside Tianli, an intense curiosity butted out inside Deng Jin's heart when he listened to their conversation. He was clueless about the meaning of their conversation, but he had already guessed that the opportunity they talked about should be the core secret in the everlasting feast hall. Others may not know how strong Tianli and how Lei were, but he knew perfectly well about it. When Tianli rescued him in the past, the military strength shown by her could be called as terrifyingly fearsome. They said they could get an opportunity. Could I get it also? Secretly, Dang Jin lamented and was also full of expectation. As he turned his head and looked out of the window, he suddenly shook and said in a deep tone, Chief Tian, those bosses are coming. Turning her head, Tian Li looked down and immediately saw more than ten black cars approaching quickly, stopping in front of the North Restaurant. More than twenty big men also got off, whereas three people came out from three cars. She had seen those three men, the big boss of Jiang Group, Jiang Ba, the big boss of Wanyuan Real Estate, Chen Jianya, and the Du Kong Winery's big boss, Du Changsa. Following them was Du Yen whom she had beaten before. Dang Jin, let's greet and take them to the second floor's hall. Yes, replied Dang Jin as he nodded with a tinge of worry inside. Though he knew that the everlasting feast hall possessed many powerful soldiers, however, they had provoked three big forces this time. He was worried that the everlasting feast hall wouldn't be their opponents if their faces were really torn. Turning her head and looking at Hao Lei, Tian Li said, let's not be idle waiting for them on the second floor. If they don't settle the account today, no matter what, we'll slaughter them. Hao Lei replied with a smile, we really know each other, eh? If the boss really order us to slay them all, you'll snatch this chance from me. All these years, I could only grab some time every year to move my hands and feet when going to the gold and diamond mine in Africa. So I got a really bad mood. Tian Li snorted coldly, good for you. You can move your hands and feet every year. As for me? It's been a few years that I haven't seen blood. I gotta shift the place with the others when I get back to Jingmen Island. How about I propose to boss to exchange our positions? No way. Hao Lei's face changed and quickly shouted. Pfft, Tian Li couldn't help laughing and gave a teasing smile before she turned and walked toward the door. Within the second floor of the North Restaurant there was a hall big enough to accommodate hundreds of people. However, the tables and chairs there had been removed by the Everlasting Feast Hall staff as only a chair remained on the bright red carpet, in the innermost hall. There, Jiang Yu and Chen Fei, who were brought back by Tian Li, knelt in front of the chair with four big men guarding them. Shame and anger. The both of them grew up with golden spoons since childhood. They used to drown themselves in a life of luxury, being superior to many, 
where others usually acted humble despite their unruliness, smiling and flattering them. Yet, why would they encounter such a disaster today? How could they be beaten so savagely by others, being forced to kneel here and wait for their parents?